The following information is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect those of a Root Awakening International nor this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor a Root Awakening International nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result. In 2013, biologist Dr. Brian Hooker received a call from a senior scientist at the CDC who led the agency's 2004 study on the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, MMR, and its link, supposedly, to autism. A media whirlwind and rumors of alleged cover-up followed. It spurred one man to quit his job as a prominent Hollywood producer to help create a documentary on the subject. Our guest today is that person, Dell Bigtree, the producer of the documentary Vaxxed, and he's about to give you a health awakening. Welcome to The Health Awakening. I'm your host, Scott Laird. You may remember that in 1998, Dr. Andrew Wakefield, a British gastroenterologist, was falsely accused of starting the anti-vax movement when he first reported in that year that the MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella, may cause autism. Fast forward to 2013, Dr. William Thompson, a senior scientist at the CDC, reveals that his employer has omitted crucial data in their final report that revealed a causal relationship between the MMR vaccine and autism. Dr. Andrew Wakefield then partnered with our guest today to create the highly publicized documentary about vaccines and vaccine injury called Vaxxed. Our guest today is the producer of that documentary and a former producer of the TV show, The Doctors. Please welcome Del Bigtree. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you. Hi, Dell. Thanks for joining us. So I have to ask you, what started this? Why do you feel so strongly? Uh, why did you feel so strongly to make Vaxxed? You know, I think that any journalist that, you know, if they ever looked at the evidence that I saw would come to the same conclusion that this is maybe one of the most important stories of our lifetime. So what got me involved was I was a medical producer on the daytime talks with the doctors. I celebrated the best that medicine has to offer, best scientists, cutting edge techniques. I've scrubbed into, you know, hundreds of ORs to shoot cutting edge surgeries myself. So I am a fan of science, I'm a fan of medicine, but I also know that where there's corporate interest involved, you know, oftentimes the patient is overlooked or safety testing can, you know, be um, overlooked or not done, which ended up being the case when I started investigating vaccine. And that, as you pointed out, really came about. What really shifted my thinking was Dr. William Thompson, a whistleblower at the Centers for, uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who said we are committing scientific fraud here. He specifically had 10,000 documents as evidence to prove that they knew that the MMR vaccine could be causally linked to autism in one of their own studies between 2000 and 2004, and they hid that from the public. I started investigating that story, and when my show wouldn't cover it, that didn't surprise me. I pitched the story, but we were a medical talk show. We were sponsored by the pharmaceutical industry. But when no one in news covered it, when this man came forward and said things like, every time I see an autistic child, I feel guilty. I can't believe we did what we did. When no one on Fox, CNN, MSNBC, no one covered it, then I realized we had a much bigger problem, that that our media has been commandeered by the pharmaceutical industry. This was a story about the CDC, so the government agency, the CDC, had been co you know, commandeered by the pharmaceutical industry. And that ended up, you know, at, you're a journalist, when you run into a story like that, you either say, did I decide to be a journalist to break a real story, or am I gonna run because I'm afraid of the size of what this is? I'm the type of person that charges in, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I've been investigating this now for over three years. I've done nothing but look at this vaccine issue, the science around it, and it is really one of the biggest cover-ups and the biggest lies, I think, in the history of mankind, and certainly the history of medicine, which is vaccines are safe and effective, vaccines don't cause autism. These are lies that have been put out by the pharmaceutical industry, and it's unfortunate that our media is helping 
you know, with this propaganda and our government agencies are not looking in to really um, get to the bottom of the truth. So why do you think there is such a defense of vaccines in America? I mean, obviously you're not a doctor, but you're just dealing with the information that you've been given. So what, what do you see there from all this information coming your way? Why do people defend this so much? You know, I my thinking's actually shifted over the years. I mean, early on, and, and a lot of people say, oh, it's greed, it's just money. Money drives everything. It's the money in politics. And trust me, this is the most, pharmaceuticals, the most powerful lobby in Washington. They're out spending oil and gas two to one. So do they have a lot of power? Is there a lot of money behind this? Yes, there's a lot of money behind it. But that doesn't explain all the people you stop on the street or every, you know, every pediatrician and CNN and MSNBC and, and people I used to respect like Rachel Maddow and other, you know, when I was a liberal. I'm a liberal progressive from Boulder, Colorado. So when my news sources, my anchors were not investigating the story that I was seeing, I tried to figure out how to explain that. And I don't think it's money. I think that we actually have a problem in that for the last 200 years since we created smallpox vaccines and polio vaccines, this was going to be the great revolution of medicine. It has become a pillar of medicine, that vaccines are the future of how we're gonna stay healthy, we'll be able to eradicate all infectious disease. And from the beginning, when you research it, there were always troublesome side effects. Polio vaccine caused cancer for millions of people because of a, of a retro uh, monkey virus that got into the vaccine. It also caused you know, paralysis in some people. Same thing with smallpox, killed unbelievable amounts of people. But I think that we put a smiley face on that in medicine. We said, look, it, we are gonna work out these side effects and this is something we dream about. This is the future of medicine. The only way vaccines work is as everybody is committed to it. If everybody vaccinates, then we can start eradicating diseases. So it was a dream. It was an idea we passionately got involved with. We'll now cut to you know a couple of centuries later in this process. And just recently, really since 1986, when we passed the Vaccine Injury Compensation Act, we went from giving children 10 vaccines to now 72 vaccines. This is a pillar of medicine that people believe in. There are too many pediatricians, too many doctors, too many scientists have said, trust me, it's safe and effective, that now when the truth is starting to surface that it's actually dangerous, it could be causing more harm than the good we ever dreamed about it causing. How do they back that up? How do they back away from the statements they've made? How do the government agencies like the CDC and the FDA say, you know what? We really never forced them to do safety studies. There are no existing safety studies using the double blind placebo experiment, which is the, the gold standard of passing any drug. We let vaccines get away from it because we believed in this dream so much. I think that there's an addiction to a dream that had an ugly side effect and no one ever figured out how to get around that side effect and now they're stuck. At this point, they can't back out. They put too much behind it. And what they're staring at is the collapse in not only the competence in the vaccine program, the collapse in the competence of doctors all over the world, the collapse of the competence in government agencies that were supposed to be protecting us. That is what I think is really at the bottom of this. If you are going to admit as a news anchor or as a citizen or as a doctor that vaccines are actually destroying countless lives, you are going to watch everything you think about science start to crumble and erode as you think, how did this happen? And do I want to be the person responsible for breaking that story? Wow. Well, we're talking about the vaccine documentary Vaxxed with the film's producer, Del Bigtree. We'll be right back with more from The Health Awakening. The book of Acts details an exciting new beginning for Yeshua's disciples. Empowered by the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, signs, wonders, and divine appointments met them wherever they went. But one such phenomenon was more shocking than any other. Ladies and gentlemen, the Almighty is able to do the impossible, to weave things together, and now we are going to see even a greater miracle. In Divine Appointments, Michael Rood gives thought-provoking detail into the Apostle Philip's bizarre incident on a desert road to Gaza, including a divine disappearing act that remains a mystery to this day. As soon as he came up out of the water, Philip is gone. Receive this exclusive teaching for a love gift donation of just $50. Or with a gift of $100 or more, you'll receive divine appointments plus a beautiful micro-talit. Wear this unique biblical sash on your belt 
to observe the instruction in Numbers 1538 to wear tassels as a reminder of Yehovah's commandments. And an angel sends Philip down to minister to him to answer his questions and he recognizes that he is in this prophecy. Make your donation now. $50, $100 or more to receive Divine Appointments plus the Micro to Leap, an outward expression of your inward faith and commitment to obey the commandments of the Almighty. Hurry, these special gifts are available only in July. Call 800-788-7887. That's 800-788-7887 to make your love gift donation now and receive the Divine Appointments Collection or visit our website at monthlylovegift.com. My phone rings and it's Dr. William Thompson. You and I don't know each other very well. You have a son with autism and I have great shame now. There's a whistleblower from the CDC who's going to come out and say that the CDC had committed fraud on the MMR study and that they knew that vaccines were actually causing autism. And welcome back to The Health Awakening. Today we have a very hot topic, the documentary Vaxxed. We are speaking with the producer, Dell Bigtree. Dell, welcome back to the program. Uh, Thank you. From the information that, that you've received, like we said before in the first segment, you're, you're not a doctor, so we're not gonna point questions that way, but from the information that you receive for the documentary, uh, do you see any proof that MMR vaccines really cause autism? You know, uh, I say this, that the film Vaxxed does not prove that the MMR vaccine causes autism. What, what the film proves is that five of our top scientists at the CDC believe they were seeing in their study of the MMR vaccine uh, a causal link to autism, and they committed scientific fraud to cover that up. That's what the film proves. I have interviewed thousands of parents around the world that tell the same story of their child regressing into autism after the MMR vaccine. What I can tell you now is as I travel the world with Vax, people would ask me, is it just the MMR vaccine since the film was specific to the MMR vaccine that causes autism? But as I traveled the country in a big bus that had Vax written on the side of it, more and more parents came forward and said, actually, DTaP vaccine caused my child's autism. And so I started recognizing that more people were claiming DTaP caused autism than even the MMR. And then when you get deeper in it, then there were people saying it was the hepatitis B vaccine. So now I've investigated all vaccines. And what I can tell you is that there's multiple causes. Uh, to autism. Autism, first of all, is sort of a catch-all phrase. Really what we believe autism to be, and this is the, the top going science, is that is children that cannot detoxify fast enough. So when they get heavy metals like mercury or aluminum or formaldehyde, things like that in their body, unlike some children that can just clear that out of their body, there are children with, with genetic differences that don't have the ability to what they call methylate, which is clear that out of their body. So it collects at higher amounts and then ends up causing a brain swelling, which leads to autism or seizures or all sorts of different side effects that are really problematic, maybe even leading to ADD, ADHD, diabetes, all of these autoimmune malfunctions that are on the rise, just like autism is. I can tell you this, there are mouse studies, rat studies, monkey studies, baboon studies, and human studies all over the world being done that show this aluminum, which is in huge doses in our vaccine program, uh, is definitely capable of causing autism. So when they give the same amount of aluminum in a childhood vaccine schedule to mice, they stop being able to continue the maze. They're no longer social, they get antisocial issues. All of the things we know to be true about autism. And then I think one of the most Exciting studies really looking at this was done by Christopher Exley in England just a few months ago. He finally dissected five brains of autistic people and found the highest levels of aluminum ever recorded in a human brain in history, which sort of closes the circuit of about seven different scientists from around the world that are saying aluminum is causing autism. Now, Chris Exley was famous for coming out and doing a brain study of hundreds of brains, proving that Alzheimer's is being caused by aluminum. I just interviewed him two weeks ago in Portugal, and his statement about Alzheimer's was, 
This is how bad it is. No aluminum, no Alzheimer's. He never planned on looking at autism. When he did, he said the levels were even higher than the brains I looked at with Alzheimer's. So we have a problem. We're injecting toxic chemicals, aluminum in massive doses, far higher than has ever been tested for safety. And then we're still injecting mercury, which is one of the, the second most toxic substance on the planet Earth. We're injecting the flu shot into pregnant women. So what's happening to that developing fetus? Yes vaccines are going to prove to be one of the major causes of autism. And any doctor or any uh, politician or any journalist that tells you this has been investigated and vaccines don't cause autism, they either have not done their homework or they are lying to you because there are 16 vaccines in the childhood schedule given in 72 doses. Only one of those vaccines has ever been through a test looking at does the vaccine cause autism? And that's the MMR vaccine if you watch Vaxxed you see that that study is a fraud. So what about the other 15 vaccines? Never ever been studied. So when they say we've extensively looked at this, it's a complete and total lie. So that's very, very interesting. Uh, you know, especially since uh, we know that cholesterol helps to get uh, rid of heavy metals throughout the body, including the brain. And now we're to being told to reduce your cholesterol. So really it's rendering people defenseless against this type of thing. And I want to get into something in our next segment that we don't have time to explain now. I want to save it uh, just for a minute here because you mentioned that uh, you're getting into all kinds of um, vaccines to discover things. And I want to ask you about peanut oil and peanut allergies. So we'll come back to that in just a second here. So we're speaking okay. with the uh, the producer of Vax, Dell Bigtree, and we'll be back with more from The Health Awakening. The Chronological Gospels Bible is changing lives all over the world, putting everything the Messiah did in exact chronological order and explaining the behind the scenes truth of what the Messiah did, when he did it, and why. The timing of it all means everything. And now, the Chronological Gospels can be easier on your eyes. The larger print edition features 40% larger type, and every page appears exactly the same as the original, so you can follow along with others who have the regular size version. The Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition also has wider margins to write notes, and the premium quality paper means you can highlight without soaking through. Plus, the Larger Print Edition lies flat, so you can teach without having to hold the book open. The Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition is a big and beautiful coffee table book, measuring a full 12 inches tall and 9 inches wide. Study the Bible with clarity and ease. I love the size of this book. This is nine by 12. The paper is, is perfect because it doesn't bleed through when I write on it. I can mark it up and I always make notes in all my Bibles. Everything is the same place as it is on the smaller version and I can just stand back and I can teach from it and it's just, it's the perfect size. I pray thee, of whom speaks this prophet? Order the Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition by phone or online. You'll get 40% larger type than the original. Call 800-788-7887. That's 800-788-7887. Or get the Chronological Gospels Bible Larger Print Edition online at arudawakening.tv slash large. God, I cannot believe we did what we did, um, but we did. Omission of crucial data, destruction of documents, misleading the Congress, grievous harm to innocent children. If we assume that things are going to continue as they have, we can predict that by 2032, 80% of the boys born will end up on the autism spectrum. Half the children, 80% of the boys. And welcome back to The Health Awakening. We're speaking with our guest today, the producer of Vaxxed, Dell Bigtree. And before the break, I talked about uh, uh, peanut allergies and peanut oil. And we know that that can be uh, included in vaccines and sometimes it reacts with people, sometimes it doesn't. But maybe the more pertinent question to ask is, you know, I for one thought that there was not any aluminum or mercury in these vaccines anymore, so what, what gives? 
So there is not aluminum or mercury in our live virus vaccines. So like MMR vaccine, varicella, anytime we have a live virus, we don't use those because it would kill that live virus. We only use it in the dead uh, virus vaccines and bacteria vaccines. But what's interesting is aluminum and mercury and DTaP and things like that, flu shots, could be leading to autism. But what I think is really fascinating is then how would the MMR be causing autism? Why did so many parents, why do parents still around the world, millions of them say right after the MMR vaccine, my child regressed into autism? Well, there's brilliant work being done by Dr. Teresa Deicher, who by the way, discovered the adult heart stem cell, all the work with the heart, the stem cells that we're now taking out of our own bodies and making, you know, and, and healing people with, that comes from Teresa Deicher. She helped us get past embryonic stem cells. So she's a genius in medicine, uh, one of the top scientists in the world. But what she's looking into is fragmented DNA from aborted fetuses. We grow the rubella vaccine in the MMR, the measles, mumps, rubella. The rubella is grown on aborted fetal tissue. So is the chickenpox vaccine. And the problem is that she's saying when we extract the virus off of this aborted fetal cell line and put it into a vaccine, we cannot get rid of that DNA. So we're injecting foreign DNA into our healthy baby. Here's the problem. In our ultimate wisdom in science, we decided, well, it may not be safe to be injecting foreign DNA. So they decided, let's chop that DNA, blend it up into little pieces, little fragmented pieces. And what she's seeing in Petri dishes, and she's got studies she's funding, is that our stem cells are actually absorbing these pieces, these fragmented DNA strands. So imagine the different letter codes and, and mutating our stem cells, which is leading to childhood leukemia and cancers like we've never seen, autism. It's a total malfunction of our body, but it's these short little pieces of fragmented DNA from a dead baby that's being injected in our healthy babies that could be leading to one of the greatest autoimmune crises in our lifetime. So this is a, an area of, of investigation that I think is absolutely fascinating. And I also find it fascinating because it's where sort of religion and science collide. I believe that there can be a balance between your idea of divine creation and science and they come together. Here is where you see breaking the laws, an abomination, taking an aborting a fetus, taking that DNA, injecting into a healthy baby is clearly causing immense problems. In, in, in our DNA and in, in our children. You know, it's almost like we have the, the debate about uh, genetically modified foods, and, and that's exactly what's happening here, isn't it? I mean, you're, you're taking genetics from one thing, uh, i.e. a dead baby, and putting it into another thing, i.e. a live baby, and now we have genetically modified humans. Humans, you're absolutely right. In fact, I think to simply put it, people will say, you know, well, Dell, you know, what is your problem? What is your issue going on? And I say this. We have an autoimmune disease crisis. We have gone from in the 1980s, before we expanded our vaccine program, when we were giving 10 vaccines, we had about 12% autoimmune disease and neurological disorders in American children. Now in 2017, 54% of our children have a chronic illness, either an autoimmune or neurological disorder. When you look at an explosion in autoimmune disease, you have to ask yourself what's causing it. People say, well, Dell, how do you know it's not the water or the air or the food? It may be all of those things. But what I say is if we're going to investigate something and put millions of dollars into it, shouldn't we be investigating the one product that's designed to alter your immune system for life? That's what it does. Just like you said, we're modifying how the body works. If you ask someone to explain or a scientist to explain what a vaccine does, here's what they'll say. We trick the body's immune system into thinking it's had a virus so that it protects them in life. But we don't just trick that immune system once or twice or five times or 10 times or 20 times or 50 times, 72 times we are tricking a child's immune system. And lo and behold, we're shocked that that immune system is now confused and is attacking the person's own body. That's what an autoimmune disease is. It's attacking their blood. It's attacking the myelin sheath of their nerves. When you have multiple sclerosis, diabetes, all of these things are autoimmune disease. We should be looking very closely at how many times we are confusing our immune system with this vaccine program. Not that, to, I think, is at the heart of what our problem is. And not to mention, you're, we're uh, injecting these things into a baby whose immune system is not fully developed anyway as soon as they come out of the womb. So they're not even ready for these things. And when you ask people very high up in the institutes of medicine, why are we vaccinating babies so young? You know what they say? 
to train the parent to show up for their well baby visits. Wow, you know, that's Dale, what it is. Dale, we're gonna come back for another minute here, but we have to wrap things up for a break. We'll be right, right back with Dale Bigtree, the producer of Vaxxed, in just a minute with The Health Awakening. The book of Acts details an exciting new beginning for Yeshua's disciples. But one such phenomenon was more shocking than any other. Ladies and gentlemen, the Almighty is able to do the impossible, to weave things together, and now we are going to see even a greater miracle. In Divine Appointments, Michael Rood gives thought-provoking detail into the Apostle Philip's bizarre incident on a desert road to Gaza, including a divine disappearing act that remains a mystery to this day. As soon as he came up out of the water, whew, Philip is gone. Receive this exclusive teaching for a love gift donation of just $50. Or with a gift of $100 or more, you'll receive divine appointments plus a beautiful micro tallit. Wear this unique biblical sash on your belt to observe the instruction to wear tassels as a reminder of Yehovah's commandments. Call or visit our website to make your love gift donation now. And welcome back to The Health Awakening. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest has been Dell Bigtree, the producer of the documentary Vaxxed. Uh, Dell, where can people find out more about your documentary and about you? Well, look, you can find Vaxxed at Amazon Prime. It's free on iTunes. Anywhere where you can find a film, you can get Vaxxed. It's one of the, it's one of the top documentaries in the world right now. Um, also, the work I'm doing, I have a weekly talk show now online called The High Wire with Dell Bigtree. You can find it on Facebook, YouTube, you know, iTunes podcast, all of that. But where I really want to lead people is, is to my nonprofit, ICanDecide.org. There you will find our white papers on vaccines that lays out all of the issues. I worked with Bobby Kennedy. We were sent by Donald Trump to speak to the National Institute of Health, the heads of CDC, FDA, National Institute of Health, and we laid out all the problems with the vaccine program. If you want to know what those are, just look up my white papers, 37 pages of every issue we brought to the government of the United States. It's called the White Paper Vaccine Safety at ICanDecide.org. And check out the high wire. Thank you so much, Dell. Our guest today has been Dell Bigtree, the producer of Vaxxed, and we'll see you next time for another Health Awakening. Thank you for joining us today on The Health Awakening. You can catch the replay of this episode and see our complete show schedule at healthawakening.tv. For more information about our guests today on all they have to offer, please visit their website on the bottom of your screen. And please remember the information you saw today is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice, nor do the views expressed reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result. Thank you.